All right, welcome back to another video and a new mesocycle. Um, we're going to be starting off this mesocycle with back match. Usually it's a chest day today. Um, it's going to be a slightly different back workout. In fact, it's probably going to be a, a, a different structure to a lot of the workouts over the next couple of weeks. The reason for that being, um, as many of you know, uh, the deload week that, was, that I, I took last week and the week before was all in service of a, a family holiday up the north coast where I got the, the luxury of doing a lot of bodyboarding. Unfortunately, I'm one of the, in my eagerness to get in and carve up some waves uh, on one of the days, I didn't take off the, the wee scuba shoes that I was wearing which usually isn't a big deal, if, especially if the, the beaches that you're on is, are uh, stony. Um, but the particular beach that I was at was very, very fine sand. And I was in the water for, I think it was about three and a half, four hours. And essentially what happened was the fine sand got caked into the, um, the scuba shoes and was just rubbing against the skin on the top of my, on the top of my toes. And as a result of that, on two, my two big toes, and, and my, pretty much all my toes, but the two big toes are the worst. The um, the skin just it just got sandblasted off. So I did, um, as a result of that, I have, I have dressings on them now. now. This happened about a week ago, um, just less than a week ago. Um, but anyway, I have dressings on them now, but it's really, they're really, really painful. Even just standing here is very, very painful. Um, but I thought I would come out and would, uh, you know, give it, give it a go anyway and see what I can do. Now, the, uh, before I set up here, I sort of went through each of the different exercises just with, essentially with no weight to see what exercises I could and couldn't do. And essentially anything where my toes are flexing is, for any reason or is basically a no-go. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off, we would normally start off with a chest supported dumbbell rows. I'm having to brace myself with my the toes on, on that particular exercise, so I'm going to have to leave those out. So what I'll do is I'll start with T-bar rows, uh, and then we'll move on to pull-downs. Now, the pull-downs do hurt um, because you are kind of uh, up a bit on my toes, but I'm going to just do as best I can. So I'll do um, wide grip and narrow grip pull-downs. Um, now the seated rows, I actually thought the seated rows are pretty much going to be the only exercise I can do because they're the one, the one exercise that I'm getting, when I, you know, I'm putting my, my heels essentially against the, the flats of the dumbbells and pressing off my heels. What I didn't bank on, of all things, was getting down and getting back up again. Yeah, it's, it's weird, when, it's only when I really, whenever you get a bit of an injury that you sort of realise how you use bits of your body that you didn't realise you used for things that seem unrelated. But getting down and getting up is really, really, that's even more painful than the chest supported dumbbell rows. So I'm going to leave those. What I'll do instead of that is I'll put in a set. Now I'm not a big fan of them, but it's the closest I can get to it. Um, of a high cable row. Um, so essentially on that, on that setup there that I have, I'll have to just drop the bench down and um, to lean, lean back. It's nearly like a pull down, but you're leaning as far back as you can. Um, it doesn't quite hit the same musculature as a, a seated row. You don't, it tends to hit the high cable seated row, I find tends to hit my sort of uh, lower and mid lat. Uh, whereas the seated, the seated cable row variations, I find tend to hit the rhomboids, the deltoids, the mid and lower traps, as well as getting a bit of the, a, a bit of the, the mid lot. Um, so, but it's essentially, it's the best, it's the best sort of alternative that I can come up, that I can come up with given the equipment that I've got. Um, I'm hoping that this isn't gonna, be, it's only gonna be a week, maybe two weeks at the most. The good thing about when the, the injury has sort of happened is that it's right at the beginning of a mesocycle and this mesocycle is likely to be quite long or it has the potential to be quite long. The next sort of time that I really want to think about, I definitely want the deload will be at the end of October at the, the Halloween week. So to have some time with the kids. Um, so I've got, plenty of time where I can ease myself in. If I need to take two or even three weeks now and ju you know, just change things up and do things differently and don't worry too much about pushing the weight, let, me, let myself heal up and just sort of build back into it gradually. You know, I, I've, got that, I've got that luxury in this mesocycle, so that's, uh, that's all, to, that's all to, the, the, the benefit, or to the benefit of me. So, um, yeah unfortunate that it has happened but it is what it is at the end of the day anyway let's get to it <laughs> 
right, that's going to do it for back. Um, it went as well as I could have, I could have hoped that it, it, it went. I actually think probably because it, I left out the, the dumbbell, the, the chest supported dumbbell rows, the T-bar rows actually went really, really well. I felt quite strong with those today. So it did, um, didn't progress, didn't move any massive amounts of weight, but that's, again, the, um, ease back into it slowly and allow the, allow the injury to recover. And uh, that's really the, over the next sort of two or three weeks, that's going to be the, the mantra going forward through it is. So it didn't move any crazy weights, didn't break any records, don't really care. Again, because this is the beginning of a meso cycle, the first couple of workouts, um, I'm not going to need to push as heavy anyway, just to get as, as to get the same sort of stimulus, just because, you know, a, a couple of weeks of a deload there. So a couple of weeks of a deload has resensitized the muscle. So pretty much any stimulus over the next, you know, couple of weeks is going to, it, 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 it's going to drive, it's going to start the drive growth quite, quite effectively. Um, I did feel that that particular workout was very much more lat focused. Like I didn't, I don't have any pump at all. Normally in the middle of my back, I'll get a, a really strong pump as well as the lats. It's really only in the lats today. Um, maybe a little bit in the Terry's major, um, but uh, that's, it's unfortunate it is what it is. What I might do next week is, if I, I still can't do my normal, my normal back sort of routine, exercise routine, what I might do is I might add in um, a set of wide grip T-bar rows or um, bent over barbell rows or something like that, just to try and focus a bit more on that upper the upper bond of the back, or the mid, the mid upper bond of the back, you know, across the, the rear delt, the, the rhomboids, and especially the, the, the middle and lower traps, because I don't really do any other exercise for the middle and lower traps. It's really only the, the rowing exercises that I, I get to, to hit those, the seated rows. So anyway, it is what it is. And uh, well, you know, we'll see what we need to modify over the next week or two until I can get back into a more, a more normalized sort of, a more normalized routine. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's video. If you've enjoyed the video, feed the anabolic algorithm with a comment, share, likes, and subscribe, and I'll catch us in the next one. Take it easy.